Hello, this is Justin at Dane Arts, and I'm going to kind of do a quick video on, not a tutorial, but just kind of show some things about T-splines and whatever else I feel like. So, first um, I wanted to, let's see, look over, I'm going to, usually every ring I start with, I start using usually something from my library. Um, as you can see here, I'll pull out a ring size 7, and I added libraries to the Burmark library, and that way it's an easy way to display everything and get to it from within Matrix. And I have shanks, patterns, and everything, so I'm going to go into my shanks, and usually I can find something, and if not, I'll be able to make something. Um, or adjust one of these for what I need. Um, right now I'll just do something basic. Let's just choose something like that. So you pull it out and it's never, usually never going to fit the ring rail. So that's when you need to scale it. So just take it and you will 3D transform it. And then from there, um, as far as the thickness on this outside goes, it all depends. I haven't, didn't think of this before until it was after I had a bunch of shanks in here, but basically when you have shanks or add shanks to the library, it's a good idea to take it and check your T-splines area. And there's a button right here called selection sets and selection sets are I don't have any on this so let me just kind of show you real quick selection sets you turn on your t-splines and I'm gonna just start selecting And since this is symmetrical, as you can see with those orange lines, I only have to do a quarter of it. And it really doesn't take long, but if you learn to save those selection sets, they will save you lots of time. So usually I'll have one for maybe the inside, outside, or maybe the sides. So take that, go into your selection sets, you just push record and name it. I'm going to just say glue outside shank. Okay, so when you have it like that um, and you, it gets deselected, all you have to do is come and push play and it'll reselect it. Um, if you do this before you save it to your library, which now that I have that, I can easily take that before I do that. Let me do it to the bridge. Um, okay, so the bridge, I'm going to do the same thing because the bridge sometimes you need to make bigger taller or thinner so I'm gonna and it doesn't take long even if you didn't have it selected you could probably easily just come and select them and do it but it's always good just to have them so we'll call that one bridge top okay my computer Oh, oops, yeah, so it should work. Go ahead, push play, okay, got it. So now, what I should do is take these, both of these, 
and add them to my library. Now I've already added a thing here in my F6 menu. If you want, this is what I did, added it to there, set working directory to the C programs where it's found. And basically that will export it. Um, it'll export it to where you want it. So I press here. I might as well save over it. And it brings me to here so I can choose which folder. Um, and I'm going to put it in my shanks and I'm going to just go over the same one that it was named. If I remember what it was named. Let's go to some icons. And it was this one. So I'm going to save. Yes. So now it should. Let's test it. I'm going to delete it. Go back to my library. Come find it. Add it. And here it comes. And let's see. You go to your selection sets and it saved them. So now you could easily just press it and then I'm going to go into this view, shade it for you. And now if you wanted to, you could like make it a little thicker or not. Um, just makes it really easy to work with. Um, then you can just pull out your stone. Usually I actually start with a stone. I never just pull out a shank. I will start with the center stone and then move on from there. Um, but just for this tutorial, I just wanted to show you that. You know, and then for heads, you could obviously use the head library or even, I mean, the head builder. And in this case, I have some styles, some preset styles that I can use. Maybe if I was going to do that or adjust them in some other way. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out from my trusty old library again. Go to my heads library. And maybe out a four prong head in this case and then you can always scale it to fit already fits pretty well but basically you could uh, easily build a quick ring pulling out parts um, you know if you wanted to add patterns or something you could just you know pull out just any pattern and the cool thing about t-splines is that you can just modify it on the fly to what you need adapt everything so if I can't find a shank or something that I need I can always just make one from scratch and then put it in the library and it just keeps building and building and then eventually I just pull one out that's similar to what I need and adjust it and goes pretty quick. Um, just can't live without these libraries. Yeah, they're awesome. And let's see. One other quick thing. Um, don't want to make this video too long. Um, let's go over here to... Here I'm going to put the T-spline HUD over here real quick. And there is something right here called compatible mode, and then there's a fast mode. If you're working in fast mode, and let's say that you don't want to convert this to a NURBS uh, mesh anymore, you want to then select these edges and put stones on it. You can select them. And then you can just 
come over here and use your extract edges. Ooh, bouncy. And then once your edges are extracted, you could easily put your gems on curve. And here's something that you need to know. Let's say that you are on some odd surface. If you're going to put point the culets to the object, it's not going to work. Why? Because you're in your fast mode. You need to be in your compatibility mode, which is a little slower, but it will be able to select the mesh now. Um, then your stones will follow the surface. Then if you ever wanted to extract isocurve, if, as long as you're in compatible mode, you can still do that on here. Um, so that way, yeah, you can just do that if you're building on it. Um, other than that, um, it's probably all I have for you tonight. Just a few ideas, tricks. Um, you can definitely do a lot with T-splines and libraries, and I think they're awesome. So um, another day I might go over, uh, I'd like to go over SmartFlow and T-splines, but there's just so many different versions right now with the, yeah. I don't want to, we'll go over it another time, but hopefully this was a little bit enjoyable and that you got something out of it. Um, and that's probably about it for now. Thank you and good night.